these components right here, billet aluminum, machined out of one big hunk of aluminum, and then sent out, chrome plated. And so this is the, the finished uh, clamshell. So that's your, your power open and power close. Hey, what's up everybody? Cody with Detroit Speed here. We're back with another project update vlog. I'm joined as always with project shop manager, Matt Butts. A lot of cool updates this month, so we're not gonna waste any more time. We're just gonna get right into it. All right, first on our list today, Simon's 1970 Chevelle. Matt, go ahead and walk us through what's been going on in the past month. So, car at its current point, we're actually getting really, really close to wrapping up all the fab work. You know, just been doing kind of some of the minor details towards the end, uh, test fit all of our audio equipment, Paul just got finished building the uh, rear subwoofer box, uh, mounting the amp. Uh, up here in the front last week, Mark went ahead and took care of the valve covers. So this is actually um, a pair of Holly's kind of retro styled uh, big block Chevy valve covers. Actually had a logo in the center. Uh, Mark welded it up, ground the grooves back in it. These fins continued all the way down to this edge. Uh, so he sanded them off added kind of the radius back into it, just kind of clean it up. It's a nice vintage looking valve cover. The subtle touches, you know, a lot of that styling on this car. So and just one of those extra little details a lot of people might not notice in the end. Running the factory style air cleaner on this car, had the offset snorkel, so we got rid of that. It will pull air all the time from the cowl. Um, originally these things had a flap at the back of the cowl that would only open up uh, at a certain point of throttle engagement. We got rid of the internal flap. It will still have the external cowl function uh, that will function off of an electronic solenoid instead of a uh, vacuum operated solenoid. Just in doing all that, just to clean up the engine bay, that's where we decided to get rid of the snorkel and just allow it all to pull fresh air through the cowl all the time. And that gives you kind of this nice, nice symmetrical looking bay. But yeah, other than that, this one's getting really close. A um, few sh short things on the hit list. Uh, we should have the forge on wheels showing up later this month. Get the wheels mocked up, double check our axle dimensions so we can weld up the housing ends. And then from there, we'll kind of metal finish most of the car, clean it up, DA it, do some nice bare metal shots, and then it'll be over to, uh, to start getting wired. All right, next in our lineup is Chris's Dodge Daytona. So Matt, what's been going on with this one? Uh, a lot of detail, uh, engine bay type work. Uh, you guys saw probably we touched on Mark getting some of the coolers and stuff mounted. <laughs> Supercharged engines, a lot extra involved. Uh, you've obviously got the charge cooler, uh, the reservoirs, the pumps, got the CNR uh, intercooler up here, got the condenser mounted, the engine oil cooler here. And then from that point, you know, we try to rough in a lot of the plumbing during fab, especially this car because it's totally scratch built in the front. So you can see where Mark's been using our assortment of uh, Earl's fittings and hoses and stuff. Like we keep a pretty good selection here at the shop, uh, specifically for this purpose. You know, we do a lot of pre preliminary routing. It's got the remote oil filter mount inside the engine bay. So working on getting the, the cooler hoses to that oil filter mount. Just gotta make sure you have all your, uh, your passageways and your uh, line clamps and routing at least 75% finalized in fab. That way you know you have room to account for everything. Uh, the remote oil filter mount. We use quite a bit of the improved racing stuff, uh, especially like the um, the filter adapters and stuff like that. They make a pretty nice product. Another thing you just finished up this week or is in the middle of is the intake tube. Uh, obviously the air filter right here. And then he's in the middle of building uh, basically a, an air box slash shroud uh, that will kind of encompass part of the filter and ultimately it'll end up feeding air through this lower panel by way of the left hand bumper opening so it will feed cool air all the way up through basically what is the core support the bumper air box ultimately to the air filter there uh, another thing that people may notice is all the tape and dots everywhere uh, you've probably seen at this point our 3d scanner that we use so since we had the whole front exterior off of the car we wanted to go ahead and laser scan the whole thing as it sits and so that way it just allows us to have the information handy. So if we want to go back and look at the hood fitment, the fender fitment, or make any final tweaks to the CAD uh, before we do the final carbon parts, uh, just having all this scan data will allow us to do that. So nice. being that the whole car is in CAD, it's just, you know, it's one more step to just kind of ensure everything is 100%, uh, basically what we expect for the final product. Other than that, getting pretty close on the front end. 
everybody's anxious for him to move on to the back, start working on that wing, yeah. uh, widen the quarter panels, stuff like that. All right, so this is a cool one to follow if you haven't already. This is Randy's 1972 K5 Blazer. So Matt, where are we at with this one? Uh, currently, Bruce is working on front and rear bumper fitment. You know, kind of honestly finishing out the whole front end package. So started by fitting the grill shell. Uh, this is a reproduction steel grill shell. Uh, these trucks came with an aluminum one factory. I'm not sure if the steel was ever a factory option, but it is cool. They do offer this in a reproduction. So got the grill shell fit, took a little bit of work in here to make a nice gap. From there, he moved down to the bumper. If you followed it, you know we clipped it with a Tacoma clip, so obviously stock bumper brackets will not work. And then in addition to that, we always cut up and tuck the bumpers anyways. So scratch building bumper brackets. Uh, what he did right here is basically position the bumper real nice and tight, centered it good, just tack these brackets in place. And so that just holds it where he wants. And then that allows him to come in here to the, the frame horns and basically start scratch building the bumper brackets that he wants. We will be shaving the hardware, uh, so it'll be totally smooth. So the yes. brackets will be welded inside the bumper. Is it gonna be body color or black? Yep, it'll be body color. Uh, it will be black. So the plan for this truck is gloss black. It'll be satin black roof, textured still black bumpers. Uh, we're actually gonna flip flop the color on the wheels. Right now it's got the anthracite outer ring. Uh, we'll black the ring out and then we'll spray the inners anthracite. You know, kind of talking about, you know, either some of those gray accents and or potentially a little bit of orange accents. Um, so that's one of those details that's kind of, we're a little ways off, but definitely talking about it. Yeah, it's uh, cool to see like with the fenders on the front and the hood and then the top now too. Like it actually looks like a blazer. Yeah, it's starting it's, to look. It's looking like an actual vehicle yeah. instead of just a, a shell. Yeah. yeah, it's weird these things, you know, they take a long time to build to this level, this caliber. So, you know, at a certain point you almost don't appreciate what the overall vehicle looks like because you see them so far apart for so long. So yeah, when you get to this point, it's pretty awesome because it actually starts yeah. looking like something. I don't know, you know, early on when we got the hood, we probably touched on this thing. The guys up at uh, Fiber Forged they do this this hood so they offer the base c10 hood in either carbon or fiberglass if anybody followed john's blue c10 that we just finished it had the carbon version we did fiberglass on this one they actually built these uh hood louver inserts for us then we're going to cut some of these output grills right yep so we have some 3d printed grills um so what we'll do is we're going to stagger it we'll do every other opening talked about doing them all but to cut down on just kind of dust and dirt and water that gets in the engine bay. Uh, we figured we'd go 50-50, so we'll stagger them, cut them out. So you'll still get some function out of it without having it totally wide open to the bottom. You know, you see a lot of people put different uh, vents, inserts and things into hoods. Uh, detail like this, it's actually a reinforced ring all oh, the way nice. around it. So that when you tighten this uh, louver set in here, you know, you're not actually distorting the hood around the perimeter. So touches like that, that's what that's what makes a really nice part. And then the other cool thing is uh, a lot of your cheaper carbon and fiberglass hoods, they'll either have a stock style understructure that's windowed out so you can see the bottom surface of the top of the hood and or sometimes they'll have no interior panel at all. But these hoods, you know, it's the full outer shell and then it's a full one piece inner shell. So it's really, really strong. And then also detail wise, it's finished out much, much nicer. So Moe's Chevelle, I think we touched on a little bit on it being back, um, did some quick maintenance items to it, fresh set of tires, stuff like that. And then uh, we just finished installing the inner chiller. What this unit does, kind of hard to see down there, but it's basically a second evaporator unit and it circulates your AC refrigerant. So when you activate the unit, your AC actually cools that evaporator unit. And then the other portion is your intercooler uh, coolant system. So it actually circulates the blower coolant through that same unit. So it uses the AC uh, to chill the blower coolant. So lower your intake, intake temps, hopefully make more power. We reworked the exhaust a little bit, did the inner chiller, we do a little bit more tuning. Probably take it back over to the dyno on E85 and see if we can't pull pull a thousand out of it. Nice. The best it ever did was 986. We're right there, so 
All right, in the past few weeks, there's been a lot of progress on Jeff's 1965 Riviera. They've got both the fenders mounted up, the air cleaners up there, the radiators on here. They've got the fan shroud. They've got a lot of wiring down on the inside. The trunk is pretty much done, isn't it? Yeah, the trunk is done. Yeah. Trunk is done. Yeah, so this one's had a lot of progress. So Matt kind of walk us through what all has been done in the past few weeks. So where was that when people last saw it? Engine was in it, firewall, and then nothing forward was assembled basically to move forward with the wiring uh, for Jason to do what he needs to do. Had to get the fenders and, fenders and inner fenders installed so then we could finalize all of the links. Uh, you know, you've got your headlights, marker lights, turn signals. It has power clamshell, headlight doors. Uh, you've got a little bit of wiring for the AC and stuff that comes up here. So had to go ahead and get the front end on, get everything gapped and then uh, start finalizing all this stuff so really really close uh, you can see everything tied up super nice all your connectors hanging out so like that's going to be your headlight harness there got your marker lights so we use a ton of uh, deutsch connectors really really nice quality really nice to work with got obviously the like you said radiator installed go back and forth depending on the car sometimes we'll do rubber hoses uh, upper and lower this one Josh fabricated uh, stainless steel upper hose. Just did these nice little short straight rubber sections. Heat shrink the clamps a lot. Just gives it that nice finished look. Yeah. You know, every car calls for a different different amount of detail, uh, different components. So a lot of times we'll put the bleed fitting uh, for the coolant passages. You know, you'll have a crossover hose, and then this fitting will bleed air to the top of the radiator. Given how clean uh, this overall package is kind of mimics the original style radiator and shroud. We didn't just want to run a fitting and a hose all the way up into this corner. So Josh did a real nice hard line. Um, still kind of gets to your highest point here. Follows the contour of this fabricated hose real nice. And then you'll just have a short little soft whip, you know, about eight to 10 inches right there. So there's kind of one of those, those extra details, you know, kind of set this one apart from A, some of the other Riviera builds and then just builds to this level, this caliber. You know, this mimics the factory air cleaner, uh, but this is a totally hand fabricated piece. It's actually quite a bit larger than the factory one. Uh, this is a fully machined, uh, basically a cap. So it would have been built aluminum and then uh, chromed and polished. A lot, of, a lot of work in that part. And again, one of the cool, the really cool kind of finished details for the car. You pointed out the radiator and the fan shroud. So it is a big single spall electric fan. I mean, it's just got the fabricated shroud, so when you're looking in from the front, still kind of has like that traditional look. Yeah. You know, the whole whole theme of this car is just, it's really, really cleaned up, but original styling as much as we can. Really cool detail here. Original HVAC controls from the Riviera. So this was as factory uh, as far as the controls, the insert and everything here. A couple of things you have. So you've got your actual AC controls, and then these two right here, volume this is actually the adjustment for the exhaust cutouts so we adapted the factory slide sliders to control exhaust cutouts and then this lower one you've got down and up so this one actually adjusts the ride height of the jri uh, coilovers completely integrated into the the oe style oe style controls still looks original so this is actually a factory bezel the console looks factory but this is actually uh, hand fabricated aluminum keeps all the stock trim on the top basically did this for packaging because this thing has the six-speed automatic transmission so the whole tunnel is raised substantially so the stock console wouldn't work so we built one from scratch really mimicked the oe style it's definitely cleaned up nicer it's all one piece that, that all is fabricated inside there and then we you see that the kind of light gray material that's a flocking material so any kind of cubbies, glove boxes, ashtray, you know, right. we always always do that flocking, same thing up there. So it's just a real nice kind of a felt. And then if you want to see the exhaust cut out, the actual display screen, it lives inside the glove box, so it'll get mounted. So if you ever want to see like what the actual position is, uh, you can just look inside there. Now this is Raptor liner, what's the, the tintable version, right? With uh... So no, it's actually, I don't know that we've used the tintable version. Uh, this would have just been black Raptor, and then we base coat clear coated it. Okay. So you can paint over it, and then it's a, uh, you know, it's actually a satin clear coat, uh, so it matches the satin finish and all the panels. And what's the the tan colors are called? Cattle tan. I believe so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, so basically, the trunk is almost finished. 
Uh, we have a fresh Optima on order, and then once this thing goes to upholstery, it will get a matching carpet mat just in the very bottom of the trunk floor yes. uh, that will match the interior upholstery. But other than that, it, that's almost finished right there. Another detail, I'm not sure if people have seen it or not, but um, actually the fuel fill right there. Oh, nice. I didn't even know that was there. Yep. So, was, that was that factory? No, that's all fabricated it, okay. um, because of all the modifications we did to the tail of the car. Right. Uh, so the only finishing touch is it'll actually it'll have a, a finished trim ring around it as well. It's a fifth gen Camaro trunk latch. So it's got a mechanical and an electric popper. Uh, so electric popper inside the car and then we typically hide a mechanical uh, override in case the battery dies or you lock your keys in the car or something like that, you can still get in. Right. But yeah, it's getting close. We're hoping to send this thing, send this thing out for upholstery, um, probably early June, late May. Uh, another cool thing we could touch on is the uh, the headlight clamshells here. Right here, you can kind of see the iterations uh, of the headlight clamshells. So I mentioned they were power. If you're familiar with Riviera's, this is the original headlight clamshell. See, so it has a real tight spacing in the horizontal uh, polish features. So what we did is we wanted to match the grill bar spacing, which is actually this right here. We scanned the headlight assemblies, these components, designed them so that they match the grill spacing at this bar height. And these are uh, 3D printed. So during fab, we mocked up these 3D printed, uh, basically clamshells, cycled them, made sure they lined up with the grill, looked really nice and symmetrical all the way across the front. And once we were happy with that, these components right here, uh, billet aluminum, machined out of one big hunk of aluminum, and then sent out, chrome plated, and so this is the, the finished uh, clamshell. So that's your, your power open and power close. And then we actually just got in this week um, some of the Holly Retrobrite headlights for it. So LED upgrade, fit really nice in there. Are these the modern white or the classic whites? Uh, these are the classic white. Classic whites. So, so it's still going to have that classic look even with the headlights too. Yeah, yeah, and we kind of went with that theme with a lot of the lighting on this car. You know, kind of the soft white, you know, the, the more modern bluish white don't look as good in some of the more classic styled cars, be it, you know, classic white. So yeah, nice. um, one thing to point out that's really cool. So we've used a ton of JW speaker, a lot of LED retrofit lights over the years. So if you've messed with these much, a lot of the aftermarket lights have this massive heat sink, uh, massive bulb housing, sometimes a fan. And so you usually have to butcher this they, bucket. You have to cut it down to fit. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a pain. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta cut them all, all up. Sometimes the bucket nests so tight in the core support, you may even be cutting big holes in the core support. So one awesome thing about these is really tight, small heat sink and then the actual bulb uh, housing itself is really small so this is a completely unmodified bucket so it actually for us you know compared to a lot of other lights we've used this right here saves a ton of time yeah and then you know still looks like a period correct lens which is nice um, some cars call for a more updated you know projector and a halo and stuff like that but given the styling of this car the kind of classic classic pattern in the lens really makes sense um, once this thing actually gets finished out, <clears throat> it'll actually be black detail between all of the lows. So just the raised portion will be chrome, kind of like oh, how nice. the factory one was. We just did some quick vinyl just to kind of see what it would look like said and done. It's gonna look cool. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be a, that'll be a detail that sets it apart. Cause as yeah. far as I know, you know, nobody's really gone as far as to do something like that. Which these look, these look all right, but. Yeah, anything you can do to kind of tie all the details together uh, just kind of adds to the overall overall look of the car. As always, we hope you all enjoy the updates from the project shop for this month. Check out our next video coming out next month and any other uh, posts that we have on Instagram. The little updates and tidbits here and there. Thanks again to Matt for helping me out, walking us through everything that's been going on. We'll see you all next time. Later.